I really like what DJI is doing is bring quadrocopter and aerial photography videography to a much more affordable level for the masses, for people who just want to own their own drone or quadrocopter, whatever you want to call it, and that they can shoot and use on a regular basis. And a week ago, they announced the Phantom 3 standard, which is kind of their cheapest option on the Phantom 3. But the specs are a little confusing, so I thought I'd go over it to clear up any confusion for the people who are kind of wondering, like, what? Now there's three different versions of the Phantom 3. Which one should I buy? What should I do? Essentially, it breaks down like this. The Phantom 3 Standard, which is the one DJI just announced, is $799. And even though it's got 2.7K video, which seems better than the 1080p of the advanced version, it has, on the Phantom 3 standard, it has an older gimbal system similar to what the Phantom 2 had. And the range of the, of the Phantom 3 standard is only half a mile. So even though you're getting the extra resolution that DJI claims you'll get with this camera with the standard version, you are getting a few, I don't know what you want to call them, if they're uh, not as good or subpar or cheaper alternatives in terms of the gimbal and the range as well as the frame rate you can only do 30 frames a second in 2.7k mode on the phantom 3 standard compared to the phantom 3 advanced which is a little bit more expensive at 999 so a thousand dollars for the phantom 3 advanced that will get you 1080p video but it will give you 60 frames a second as well as the upgraded gimbal and a range of 1.2 miles so there is a reason to upgrade, even though it might not look like it in terms of resolution. It is a step back from the Phantom 3 standard, oddly enough. I don't know why they decided to do that. It seems like they should have just done 1080p on the Phantom 3 standard, but maybe they thought the 2.7K would be attractive. Who knows, maybe the Phantom 3 Advance will get a firmware update, or I don't know. But the Phantom 3 Advance does 1080p at 60, and again, like you get the upgraded gimbal and the extra range. And then the Phantom 3 Pro version, which is 1249 so again, another price point up, jumping in price. That'll give you 4K video. It's got the upgraded gimbal. It's got the additional range of 1.2 miles in terms of the uh, communication. So really that one you're paying for the 4K video and the advanced picture quality there. And if that's what you need, go for the Pro. If you only need 1080p, go for the Phantom 3 Advance. But I was a little confused about the Phantom 3 standard because when I saw when I saw the announcement and saw that it did 2.7k, I thought, what the heck are they doing over there? It's just, I, I you know, I, it's kind of confusing when companies do this. They offer more advanced features at a lower price point with lesser features in other regards, and then they kind of flip-flop it for the more advanced one. It just seems like they should make it more clear-cut in some way so to avoid any confusion. But hopefully that helps you out a little bit in terms of if you're considering getting a Phantom 3, uh, what to get. Now, anecdotally, I've heard some people say that the Inspire 1 is still the only really good option to get, even though that is much more expensive. So you know, keep that in mind. But I've also heard horror stories from people saying that the Inspire is terrible and needs firmware updates and all that stuff. But the stuff coming out from DJI is really cool because I like how they keep pushing the market forward, making the stuff more affordable. And I'm glad to see them using the quadrocopter language versus the drone language. I know the media and traditional news outlets love to talk about drones and how scary they are and invasion of privacy and all that stuff. But Really, hopefully, people are using this when they're using it as, as professional tools to do, whether it's aerial photography or aerial videography. It's really a valuable tool to have in your uh, backpack, especially with these Phantoms. The Phantom 3 is very small, very portable. You can take it pretty much anywhere. And having that option, getting that higher quality uh, production value, if you will, adding that to your edits or to your productions. Now, I will say I'm not a fan of videos that are all aerial shots. You know, someone who just buys Phantom 3 and they do edits of just aerial stuff. But it's really valuable to be able to insert those aerial shots every once in a while into an edit, whether it's an establishing shot or a particular uh, transition that you need. That stuff is really cool and it, it helps fill out your production into something that for a long time was only available to people who are willing to rent out aerial helicopters and do really expensive shoots with huge helicopters that take a ton of gas and they need a lot of work going into it 
rather than some of this stuff where you it doesn't look look quite the same surely not but you can at least get by on a lower budget production with you know phantom 3 or some of the other drone quadrocopter options that are out there so i for me personally i'd probably go with the phantom 3 pro just for the 4k and making sure that you have the upgraded gimbal and everything is kind of the best that it can be because the price point really isn't that much more expensive compared to the other ones but if you're trying to save a buck or you just want to do it for fun the phantom 3 standard and the phantom 3 advanced should be uh, perfectly suited for your needs